All right, this morning we're taking a look at Alamo United Methodist Church. Uh, the first thing you'll notice, as I did probably, is the big church building in the corner. I say this for a lot of sites, but that shouldn't be the main thing on your homepage. Uh, your church is about the people that are in it, so let me see some people on the homepage. Certainly having pictures of your facility is a good thing, uh, so people know what it looks like when they drive up and that kind of thing, but put it elsewhere under the About page or something like that, not right on the homepage. Um, next thing I noticed was your page title was AUMC Home, uh, which again, this is what comes up um, as the name of your page in Google when people search. Uh, you rank better for those words. You've got nothing in there. Um, AUMC, people aren't going to search for that much unless they already know who you are. I would make that Alamo United Methodist Church home. And then uh, since you're actually located in uh, San Antonio, I'd probably put that up there too. I have a pretty long post about, about good page titles and that would be something to take a look at. Um, in this case here, this this is probably it's probably okay to use AUMC throughout the site to abbreviate it, since, especially since you have it here, but I would do it in the page title, do it a little bit better there. Um, and talking about photos too, I noticed on the entire site we have a picture of the church building, um, there's the cross and flame, one page there was some clip art of an angel and a clip art of some choir, uh, photos and pumpkins and then staff pictures. So the only pictures of people on the whole site are just the staff pictures Which that's certainly a good thing to have that you really need more people and I know you have some space issues on your server here But tossing a couple of, of fairly low res pictures in there shouldn't make a big difference um, Going further down the page uh, We have all this stuff about Sunday services, which is great, but I can't click on any of it I want to know tell me more about your worship service. Tell me about children's worship. Tell me about David Edgar. Um, tell me about Sunday school. I can't click anything to see anything more. Those a lot of this. This should be full of links where I can click to get more information. Um, and the same thing down at the bottom here. Child care and nursery service is great. Let me let me hear about the nursery. You know where is it? Um, what ages is it? Can I volunteer? Nothing. I just can't do anything there. Um, then this this is kind of nice to have. I guess I'm not sure it needs to be on the home page. Um, I would certainly put it on your contact us page or how to find us, but I suppose it's okay. Kind of go either way. Uh, this is just kind of chucked down here. Like, i got to put this somewhere, I guess, so we'll stick it down here. Um, and it certainly looks that way. So if you want to promote that newsletter, promote it, but don't just tuck it at the bottom. You know, make it, make it more noteworthy or put it somewhere else where it might belong. Uh, we'll go look at a few more pages, though. If we go to the About page, um, again, we have About AUMC, which need to be expanded. The page names are all well, awful, frankly. Um, this is called page375.htm. This really should be about.htm or about us or something like that. Don't use spaces, maybe about-us.htm. You know, it'd look much light, nicer if it was something like that. And again, we'll help you in Google a little bit, help you a variety of places. Um, if you could get it out of this index files folder, that would kind of be nice too, but not as big a deal, but I would certainly change those names. Um, and then one thing I noticed throughout the site, start doing here, you have underlines. And underlines are well associated with links. So if it's underlined, I should be able to click it. You know, and you, you use underlines a lot for uh, emphasis, which that's what bold and italic and perhaps some colors are for. Not underlines. So underlines are for links. And those are throughout the site. You'll see some of that. Uh, going to the contact page, it's pretty good. Got the email and phone for a lot of stuff. Um, I noticed there's no address here. I actually was looking for the address at one point to figure out what city you were in. It took me a while to find it because the only place on the site that has it is at the very bottom of the home page. Um, I would put that down in the footer of every page, probably you know, your church name, address, phone, perhaps email, you know, always down there. But certainly on your contact page, you should have that. And you should also have your map here. Um, actually, I just noticed this. This certainly is a, a worthy cause, but seems kind of random to put that on the contact page. Again, something else you just said, well, we got to put it on the site somewhere, so let's just stick it here. Um, this is why a blog is always a good idea for a church. Um, not only can you talk about events, but it's a good place to put this kind of stuff. It gives you a, a great outlet for a lot of that just stuff. You can put your newsletter in the blog, you can put this in the blog, do a lot of things there. Um, I also notice there's no link to your Facebook page, Twitter account. I don't know if you have any of that stuff. Twitter, for a small church, you could argue that you don't need it, but Facebook, there's no excuse for any size church not to be on there. With 500 million users on there, I mean, a good percentage of your church, regardless of age, is on there. I mean, my 60-year-old mom and dad's on there, and my 85-year-old grandma's on there. I mean, people are on Facebook, and a lot of people expect to be able to contact you that way, um, especially with the younger kids. 
I found a number of high school students. You know, I said, I sent you an email last week. They said, oh, I only check it every couple of weeks, you know, when I get around to it. They're on Facebook all the time. That's how they communicate. If you give them these options to contact you, they'll say, eh, I'll come back later. But if they can shoot you a message on Facebook and or Twitter, you know, you might, you might get some contact that way. Uh, one church I was working with, when they started promoting their Facebook page a lot more, they noticed the amount of email they got went down simply because people switched and used the method they're most comfortable with. You shouldn't, shouldn't force users to use your methods. You should open it up and let them communicate with you in whatever way is best for them, whether that's through email or phone or fax or sending you a letter or Facebook or Twitter or whatever. Let them contact you whatever way is easiest. Don't expect them to, to bend to how you want to work. Um, let's see. The services page said, okay, cool. Here's where I find out about the services because I still know nothing about your Sunday service and this is actually other services, which is certainly a good thing. Um, but I still know nothing about your worship service other than what time it is. Don't know, is it traditional, contemporary, blended? Am I wearing jeans or am I going to look silly without a suit? Or I have no idea. So yeah, no idea what your service is like. I'm not coming to visit just as a, you know, as a user in the area. Got to make people feel comfortable rather than, you know, you have on the front, um, you know, inviting and friendly community church, which I don't doubt, but I don't feel invited or comfortable at this point because of the site. And so I probably won't come visit. You know, all I know is worship Sunday at 11. And based on the size of church and, you know, that kind of thing, I can sort of get an idea of what it's probably like, but tell me what it's like. Don't make me guess what it might probably sort of kind of be like. You know, just make it very clear what it's like. Include some pictures, tell me what to wear. Tell me what kind of music you have, you know. And again, right here, I want to be able to click and, okay, worship. You know, some one of these should take me to a page about the worship services. Um, look at the staff page for a minute. This is a pretty solid staff page. I mean, not much to it. But I always like to have photos of the staff members. Um, for example, like if I, if I was talking to Arthur about helping out at the church, and I said, okay, I'll come meet you this Sunday, but I have no idea. I've never met him in person before. It's great to have a picture I can go and say, ah, that must be Arthur right over there. I can go talk to him. And I've actually done this before with nursery directors and youth directors. You know, if I want to bring my kids in, you know, I'll talk to them on email about their program and stuff. And it's nice to be able to associate that face before I meet them when I see them at church the first time. So that's great. The one thing I will say, actually a few things, I always like to have staff pages broken into separate pages. You should see Tom, maybe a small picture, and then click for a page just about Tom with his information and his contact info. The reason for that, I'll go back to the home page here, Pastor... Edgar, I should be able to click and go right to information about him. And so if he had his own page on the site, I could go right there. Um, the same is true, like, if I click on the nursery page and read about it, you can tell me, let me run over and get the person's name. I'm not sure if there's a nursery person. But whoever's in charge of the nursery, maybe Becky's in charge of that as one of her duties. On the nursery page, you can say, for info, contact Becky and link me directly to her page. That's always good to have. And the other funny thing I noticed here is on the contact page, there's individual phone numbers for a lot of these people, but on the staff page, there's not. So, I mean, I can email them, but why not include their phone number right here, too? I'm kind of assuming, if I haven't stumbled upon the other page, that there's not separate phone numbers for them, and there's no way to do that. So, um, just add a little more info there. And again, you don't need it on this page, necessarily. You can just say, you know, I would say maybe just a picture, name, and title. You know, senior minister, lead pastor, however you want to word it, and then I can click through for more information. Um, that'll help you a little bit in Google, too, when people search for things like, you know, David Edgar, Tom Kinkeed, whatever. They'll come up higher on that page, you know, which is good for them a little bit, too. They're a page that speaks well of them versus whoever, who knows what else might be out there. Uh, but good for you guys, too. It drives a little more traffic to you. Um, the last thing, actually two more we'll look at here. Um, the special worship services. This is a fine page, but wow, it's Christianese. Um, you know, a non non believer or even I guess kind of a semi believer, you know, goes to church a little bit, but you know, not quite sure is going to be just clueless on this page. You know, what is Monday, Thursday? What is Lady Sunday? You know, what is what is any of this? A lot of things. I don't know a few what Christmas Eve they can figure out, but I mean, a lot of this those have no idea. And again, okay, well, let me see what this is. You know, if nothing else, actually, I've got a typo there. I just noticed too. Monday Thrust Day. Um, you know, if nothing else, link that over to Wikipedia or something, just so they can see what it's about. Um, ideally, you'd have a page about it on your site. Um, another good reason for a blog, too, is each of these happen. You can talk about them on the blog, and then in future years, you know, you could link them to read about last year's service, and it takes them over to it, and it'll explain what the service is and how it went, and 
what what they should expect and that kind of thing. Um, but again, this is this is going to scare off any any non-believers. I would think this kind of thing when they see all that Christianese, they just yeah, not going to do real well on that kind of page. One other thing I noticed on a few pages is the menu kicks way down low. Like in here, the menu's much further down the page than other ones. That's some kind of formatting issue. I'm not quite sure. We have to dig into the code to see what it is. Um, I like that the menu is consistent. You always want to keep the navigation consistent, but the fact that it drops down there is kind of a problem. You'd want to take a look at that. Um, there you go. I hope that gives you some direction, some ideas on what you can do going forward. Thanks.